This video will continue looking at the law of sines. This time we'll look at an example of using the law of sines when we're given a side, a side, and an angle. We'll also look into cases where the law of sines does not work. Let's go back to our oblique triangle. Again, the angles are capital letters and the lengths of the side are lowercase letters and the lowercase a is across from the uppercase angle a and that works for b and c as well. We've already talked about the fact that law of sine works if I give you any two angles and any side, whether it's the angle angle side or angle side angle. Let's look at the case where I have two sides and then an angle. For instance, if I gave you length b was 15 and a was 20 and angle b was 30 degrees, I have a side, a side, and an angle. If I go back to my law of sines, and you might notice here that this is the reciprocal of what I used in the first video, but both are valid, I can go ahead now and instead of lowercase b, I'll put the number 15, instead of lowercase a, I'll put 20, and I also know the sine of b is really the sine of 30 degrees. Now I want to be able to solve for one variable at a time, so I'm going to ignore the sine c over c for right now and focus on this part of the equation. I need to solve for sine of a. I'll do that by multiplying both sides by 20, and then I find that the sine of a is equal to 20 times sine of 30 degrees, all divided by 15, or that sine of a is equal to 0.6667. Of course, I don't want the sine of a, I want the angle a. So again, I'll use my inverse sine function and I'll say the inverse sine of that 0.6667 should be equal to my angle A. We'll watch the mode of my calculator. I want my answer in degrees, so my calculator needs to be in degree mode, and that works out to be, let's see, A is equal to 41.81033 degrees. You know, I haven't talked a lot about rounding in this, but if one angle is given to you as rounded to the nearest degree, then all the angles really need to be rounded to that same number. So let's go ahead and round A to 42 degrees. Now that I know that angle A is 42 degrees, we're back to the case where I know two different angles of my three angles of my triangle. This is just like our previous video. Anytime you have two angles, go ahead and find that third missing angle by subtracting the other two angles from 180 degrees. And in this case, we find that that missing angle is 108 degrees. Once I have that, and I plug that into my law of sines, I can find C, the length of that third side. To do this, I notice I have C in the denominator, so I'd like it in the numerator, so I'll multiply both sides by C, and I end up with C times sine of 30 degrees divided by 15 is equal to sine of 108. Now if I multiply both sides by 15 times sine of 30 degrees, my left hand side will give me just C. Again, if I put that into my calculator, I end up with C equaling, or approximately equaling, 29. So I am able to use the law of sines if I give you two sides and then an angle. That is, if I give you a side, a side, and an angle. Well, what other combinations are available? Well, I could give you all three sides. Will the law of sines work if I have three sides? Well, let's look at this. Say I gave you this problem, length 12, 13, and 25. If I take my law of sines and I plug in those values, I can see that no matter what I do, no matter which two parts I compare of the law of sines, I can never get one unknown in my equation. I'll always have two unknowns. So I'm not going to be able to use the law of sines if I'm giving three sides. I'm going to have to use something called the law of cosines, and we'll go over that in another lecture. What if I give you two sides and an angle, but this time the angle is between the two sides? For instance, like this. If I give you length B is 12, angle C is 80 degrees, and length of side A is 18, can I use the law of sines to solve this? Well, again, let's see. Here's my law of sines. I know that uppercase C is 80 degrees. I know that length of side B is 12, and length of sine A is 18. 
and I have the exact same problem that I did when I looked at the three sides. There's no way I can make an equation with just one unknown. So I'm not going to be able to use the law of sines if I'm given a side and an angle and a side. That is an angle between two sides. We'll again be using the law of cosines for that. Okay, one final example. What if I have three angles. I give you all three angles of the triangle. With that information, can I solve my triangle? And the answer is no for the law of sines. And actually, it's going to be no for the law of cosines as well. And the problem is that if you have similar triangles, that is triangles with the same angle, I don't know what size the triangle is going to be. All of these triangles on the screen in front of you have the same three angles. So just knowing the angles is not enough to tell me what the lengths of the sides of the triangle are. So that concludes talking about the law of sines. We now know that we can also use the law of sines if I give you a sign and an angle. And we've also talked about when law of sines does not work. And now we'll be next talking about the law of cosines.